What's up guys? Horizontal and vertical slope is one of those problems that I think, you know, overly confuses students because it's not typical the way that we always like to, I, you know, understand our slope. So what I want to do in this video is just kind of like understand the differences, um, understand how we can quickly identify when we have vertical or horizontal slope and just kind of took like a visual representation of that and look at and compare that to what we have from the algebraic definition of slope. So the first thing I want to do is like just kind of understand like what exactly is slope and then how does that relate to our horizontal and vertical formats. So just remember like when we have two coordinate points, all right, um, and let's say we have a coordinate point here, actually put a point on there, and then we have a coordinate point, you know, over here, okay? And let's call this um, coordinate point number one and coordinate point number two. We're trying to find the slope. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find the relationship between the X and the Y coordinates between these two points. Now we can go from one to two or we can go to two to one. It doesn't really matter, right? But what we're taking into um, impact here is the change in our vertical compared to the change in our horizontal to go from one point to the next, all right? So when we're looking at this and like, that's why we call it like the, you know, the rise over, you know, the run like kind of effect, right? Um, but what I want you to, to recognize in this point is like when we have vertical, like what does that mean? So let's go and take a look at, actually, let's do a horizontal first because that's a little bit easier, I think, to recognize here. So when I have like a horizontal um, or two points that are horizontal here, let's say I have here. Now here's my point number one and point number two. So the change in between these two points here, right, we have a vertical change, but we don't have anything, I'm sorry, we have a horizontal change but we have nothing vertically that's going on, right? To go from point one to point two, I'm not going up or down at all. I'm just moving to the right or to the left, right? Depending on if you're saying from point one to point two or from point two to point one. But there is no change vertically. So there's no change in the Y coordinates of these two coordinate points. And in similar fact, that's the exact same thing that's going on when we have a vertical change here. So, you know, let's say we have our two points over here. Let's say we have them and here. And let's say here's point one, number one, and point number two. Now, in this case, what I want you to recognize is now we have a vertical change in our two coordinates, but there's nothing moving left or right. There's no change horizontally. So this is really important because if I wanted to kind of put this into context, right? Like, let's look at our slope here. Our slope in this case is like we change, we went up, our rise over run. Well, first of all, let's go over our basic understanding of slope, which would be a rise over run. Okay, so the rise is how far we're going vertically. And let's just read everything from left to right to keep things simplistic. So in this case, I'm going up to, and then I'm going over one, two, three, four, five. All right, now what about this slope? When we have, a, when we have um, two points that are horizontally connected, there's no change in vertically, right? I don't have any rise. I'm going up and down zero, right? But my horizontal change is one, two, three, four, five. So anyways, zero divided by five is always just going to be a zero. Now in this example, I have a vertical change of one, two, three, four, five, but my horizontal change is zero, right? There is no difference left and right. So this is really important because the difference here is when you're like when you have zero divided by five, that's equal to zero. But when you have five divided by zero, that's going to be undefined, right? Because you can't divide by zero. Now, the thing I want you to like understand about this is like we can actually identify the slope rather easily because think about it, guys. If you look at this example, between point one and point two, all right, these are not these two points, but between point one and point two, what is the same? The same thing is the Y value is exactly the same, okay? The Y value is exactly the same. So the change in the Y is going to be zero. And so that's what I want you to understand here. Like these are both X, Y coordinates. Like that's an X, Y right? And this is an XY. Okay. Now notice though, the Y value is exactly the same. So when I find the change or the difference between them, I'm going to get zero. Now, what do I mean if I find the change or the difference between it? Well, let me kind of go through exactly like what I'm exactly talking about here. Here's coordinate point one. This can be written as an X, Y, and this can also be written as an X, A, Y, right? Now, again, to kind of differentiate them, I can say this is X1 and this is Y1, and I'll call this one a X2 and a Y2. So when we want to find the change, like what exactly am I trying to do? When I'm finding trying to find the change in between these two points, I'm saying, all right, if this is like, if I want to find the ch this horizontal change, right? If let's say this is a, my X1 and um, let's, yeah, this is going to be my coordinate point X1. Let's just find, sorry. Let me go back to the horizontal points. If I want to find 
right? So here's my two points horizontally. Okay, so let's say here's x1 and here's x2. If I want to find the difference between them, like, yeah, you could count, right? But couldn't you also just say x2 minus x1, right? If you subtract them, that's going to be giving you the difference. And the same thing, like if I have two vertical points, guys, and I want to find the change between these vertically, all I simply need to do is take y2 minus a y1, okay? So when I'm looking at this, the reason why this works is because when I want to find the slope, that between these two points, now again, I already know that when the change in the y is zero, then I'm gonna have a slope that's equal to zero. But if you want to go ahead and follow the formula, remember it's the change in the rise or the rise, which is going to be the change in the y coordinates, right? So that's going to equal a y2 minus a y1 over the change in the x coordinates, which is going to be a x2 minus an x1, right? Because that's how far things are moving horizontally. You can count, but also algebraically, you can just subtract the two values from each other. So in this example, like I know when I'm subtracting, when the, since these values are the same, I know I'm going to have a y2 minus a y1 all over a x2 minus an x1. So the change, and what is the change of two minus two? It's just going to be zero, right? So again, this is a negative five minus five, which is equal to a negative 10, but zero over a negative 10 is just equal to a zero. Now in this example, next example, what do you know about the x's? The X's are exactly the same. So whenever you're trying to find the slope and you say, oh, the X coordinates are exactly the same. Guess what the slope is undefined because there's no change horizontally. So the change in the X, which is in the denominator is going to be zero and you can't divide by zero. It's going to be an undefined slope. But again, let's kind of go through the motions if you want to. So M is equal to, right? It's an eight minus four all over a one minus one. Okay. Again, just following change in Y's, subtracting the Y coordinates and subtracting the X coordinates. And again, we're going to get a four over zero, which is going to equal again, a undefined slope. So therefore that's it. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.